right. Well, today we wrap up our five-part series entitled The Gospel in Every Sense. And if you've missed any of the past ones, you can just get on YouTube and search Edmund Adventist, and then you can pull up the past sermons there. You might have to go over, I've noticed that lately, um, since we are live streaming, that usually the video gets saved not under videos, but you have to click on live, and it will show you the past live streams, and then you can get to that sermon. Or there is a podcast. You can just search Edmund Seventh Avenue Church on whatever podcast platform that you use, and you can pull up, it's just the sermon, everything else is cut out, just the audio there. And so, yeah, this is, this is part five. We've, we've come a long way, and I, I truly believe, and I hope that you do too, that our senses are a gift from God. Our senses are a gift from God. They shape how we interact with the world around us, but they also serve as powerful metaphors for how we interact with God spiritually. Just as we see, hear, taste, smell, and touch in the physical world, Jesus invites us to engage him in the same ways spiritually. In a world that's constantly vying for our attention, God is calling us to slow down and to be present with him, to awaken our spiritual senses and fully experience the freedom and life of victory that Jesus offers. So join me today as we look at the sense of touch, the sense of touch, as we explore what it means to be truly touched by God and his kingdom. May we ask him to know what it's like to feel the touch of Christ that leads to peace, to comfort, and to lasting transformation. Today's sermon is entitled, Experiencing the Healing Hands of Christ. In our scripture reading today, it came from Luke 6, 19, and all the crowd sought to touch him, for power came out from him and healed them all. Whether it's a comforting hug during a time of grief, the reassurance of a hand on the shoulder, or even a moment where human contact brought healing and connection. We can all think of times in our lives when we experience the power of a loving touch. You know, I've, I've never forgot, this was probably seven years or so ago, Larie, something that you, you shared with me, and you've shared with me since then, but just the, the power and the comfort that a simple touch can bring when somebody is grieving, when somebody is burdening, burdened, just to place your, your hand on their back up near their neck and just, just a gentle rub there. Am, am I getting it right? <laughs> Nerve endings are there. And, and yeah, I, just, I thank you for sharing that. And just so you know, I use that quite often. And it's just, it's amazing. Some of the things that you, you'd think like, oh, just a simple touch, just a little, you know, rub, rub on the back. It's like, no, no big deal. But in those moments where life is really hard, in those moments where, where things just seem very heavy, something that seems very small to an individual who is burdened by the world, it can be very, very big and have a tremendous impact. Physical touch can convey compassion, love, and care in a way that sometimes words cannot. In the Bible, Jesus often uses touch as a way to heal, as a way to restore, and as a way to transform. As physical beings, we humans, we long for connection. We need it. And Jesus meets that longing by reaching out to touch us, both physically and spiritually. 
we're invited not only to experience his healing touch, but also to then go out and to be his hands in the world, to be Christ's hands in the world, extending that same healing that we experience from him, we can extend that to others. There are numerous examples of this in scripture. One of them is found in the gospel according to Mark, chapter one, verses 40 through 42. And a leper came to him, imploring him, and kneeling said to him, if you will, you can make me clean. There's a lot of faith in that statement. (laughs) Moved with pity, Christ stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I will be clean. And a few days later, a a couple years down the road, (laughs) No, it says, and immediately the leprosy left him and he was made clean. This passage highlights the significance of Jesus touching a man with leprosy. A person who in, in this time in her earth's history was considered untouchable, unclean. If you touch them, then you become unclean. The touch of Christ brought both physical healing, but also societal restoration to this man. It was profound. It was life altering for this man. And then in Matthew's gospel account, chapter eight, we find this little story And when Jesus entered Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law lying sick with a fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her. And she rose and began to serve him. How beautiful is that? I mean, Jesus was invited into that house. He's coming there for a meal. He's really coming there to be the center of attraction but he recognized the need. He recognized Peter's mother-in-law who wasn't doing so well. I mean, you've had a fever, right? It's usually not your best moment. There could be chills. You're, you're hungry, but you have no appetite. <laughs> you're hungry, but you're nauseous. It's just, it's not, it's very uncomfortable. And Jesus is like, well, I'm here. And I can fix this. Why not fix it? And then in John's gospel account, we see this. Now, this is after Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Now, before this, Thomas was a little unsure, right? He gets the nickname Doubting Thomas, and this is really where that that nickname comes from. You would think that Jesus just sort of appearing in a room with a closed and locked door would be enough for him, but he was still sort of wrestling like, I don't know. Are you really Jesus or do you just look like him? (laughs) And Jesus could have easily just, you know, flown off the handle and like, I was with you for three and a half years. Really? Where was your faith? Like, why can't you just believe? Why can't you be like the other disciples here? But he meets him where he's at. And, And his gentleness that Jesus always showed And he was like, okay, how about this? You're struggling with doubt. Let's put a let's put a little faith into the matter here. Let let me help you along the way. Because I mean, honestly, we might look at Thomas and say, like, oh, he was just so doubtful, he didn't have any faith. But I want to submit to you the fact that he listened to Jesus and was willing to put his hand out and touch Jesus' hands, willing to put his hand out and, and feel the wound in Jesus' side. Just that action showed faith. I mean, this was a guy that he watched die on the cross. 
This was a guy that was put into a tomb and was not breathing anymore. It, it's, it's going to take some faith to even begin to be willing to believe that that guy that died is now alive and he's standing before me and talking. And so Jesus met him where he was at and faith took hold. Thomas didn't have anything else to say other than that, than just the truth. My Lord and my God. But then we can also turn to the Old Testament. Isaiah 41, verse 13, it says, For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, fear not. I am the one who helps you. The Father wants to touch us with his comforting and healing hand. And Jesus came and lived this out. His earthly ministry was full, chock full of moments where he touched people to bring healing, to bring comfort, to bring restoration. Sometimes even restoration of physical life. But more often, restoration of spiritual life whether it was lepers, whether it was the blind, the sick, or even his disciples, as we just saw with Thomas, Jesus used physical touch to demonstrate the Father's compassion and power. Amen. In touching others, he broke down barriers. He removed shame and restored dignity. And while Jesus is no longer physically walking among us, his spirit is here. His touch is still experienced spiritually through that Holy Spirit. I mean, Jesus himself, he told his disciples, hey, it's, I, I'm, I'm leaving soon but it's actually good that I go away because if I go away, then I will send my spirit. And when Jesus was here walking this earth, he could be beside his disciples, in front of his disciples, behind his disciples. There was even times where you see John leaning on Jesus. But now, Jesus, through his spirit, can dwell within us. He views us as his holy temple. There's not any more closeness than that. No more greater intimacy. And so his hands continue to heal us from sin, from emotional wounds, from spiritual weariness, the invitation is for us to come close, to reach out in faith, and to experience the transformative touch of Christ. Amen. Just as we receive Jesus' healing touch, we are called to be his hands in the world. Amen. Extending his love, extending his compassion, extending his service to others through our words, through our actions. Physical touch can be a powerful way to convey God's love to the world. Whether through comforting someone in grief, helping the marginalized, or simply just being present with someone in the midst of their pain. In every act of service, whether large or small, we become the hands of Christ in the world, touching others with his love. We mirror the tenderness of a savior who never turns away, never turns his back. I wanna challenge you to reflect on areas in your life where you need to experience the healing touch of Jesus. Whether it's a physical ailment, whether it's emotional hurt, or maybe a, a spiritual burden. 
I invite you to come to Jesus in faith. As little as your faith might feel to you. Jesus didn't say you need a mountain-sized faith to move a mustard seed. He said you need a mustard seed-sized faith to move a mountain. And scripture tells us that each of us have been given a measure of faith. It's not something we have to earn. It's not something we have to work for. You have it. Are you willing to lay hold to it and act upon it? So I invite you to come to Jesus in faith, just like the leper, just like that that woman we can read about in scripture who had the issue of blood who knew that she wasn't wanted in that crowd, who knew that it was uh, against the, the, the customs of the day to reach out and touch somebody when she had this ailment. And she reached out in faith and just touched the hem of his garment and was healed, made whole. His touch, Jesus' touch is always available to those who reach out to him. And as you receive this divine healing, don't just stop there. Allow others to touch Jesus through you. I'd like to invite you to consider how you can be the hands of Jesus in your day-to-day life. Who in your community, your workplace, Your neighborhood needs a comforting touch, a word of encouragement, a helping hand. Your actions can be the tangible expression of Jesus' love to those around you. Which brings us to our final reminder. Dear friends, never forget the spirit of of Christ lives within you. Your words, your actions, your touch can reflect Christ to a world that is desperately in need of love. True love. Love incarnate. The kingdom of God is spreading through this world and we are the ambassadors We are the ambassadors. And now, as we lead into our communion service, we have the opportunity to humble ourselves through the ordinance of humility. We have the opportunity to humble ourselves by washing someone else's feet. We have the opportunity to humble ourselves by allowing someone else to wash our feet. God himself came into this world to serve humanity, to serve humanity. And we have been invited to follow after his example. So let us pray. And then I'll explain a little bit about how this is going to go. Our loving, gracious, heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for our senses. And Lord, not just that we can use these senses out in the physical world, but that they are also opportunities for us to connect with you through the Spirit. Lord, we have recognized through this series that seeing and, and, and hearing, tasting and smelling and touching, that these are all beautiful gifts from you, beautiful opportunities to experience the world that you have created for us to enjoy, but also to recognize that they are openings for us to connect with you. And so Lord, as as we go through life, we recognize that touch is very powerful. 
And we, every single day, have the opportunity to use that touch for good or for wickedness. But Lord, we believe that your spirit is within us. We believe that your spirit is leading and guiding. And it is the desire of our hearts to be able to touch others with your love. That we can comfort people when they're down. That we can heal people. That we can take people by the hand and lead them to you. So Lord, give us those opportunities. Give us those opportunities to be touched by you, to be changed by you, to be transformed and made whole by you. And then to recognize that because your spirit is now within us that we can go and touch other people with your hands. Give us those opportunities, Lord, and we will give you all the glory, honor, and praise. We pray this prayer in faith and we seal it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.